Good morning. Welcome to our online Pentecost service here at Hope United Church. While we are joining you online because of COVID restrictions, we have a fantastic service plan today. Reverend Sean is on vacation, but Reverend Hubert from St. John's United will be covering all pastoral emergencies. Today in our intergenerational service, we are celebrating the beginning of the first church. Later in our service, we have a guest speaker, Reverend Robin Brown Hewitt, who will be bringing us the reflection and prayers. On behalf of the Church Life Committee, I would like to extend a warm welcome to Robin and thank her for participating in our service today. Reverend Robin is United Church Campus Minister at Dalhousie University Multi-Faith Services. We here at Hope have supported this ministry in the past with our collection of cans at Christmas to build a Christmas tree, the boxes of craft dinner at Easter to build a tomb, and recently we collected pies for the fundraising on Pie Day. So come in, come in, and sit back and enjoy. Today is Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a rush of wind filled the place. Divided tongues of fire appeared among them and rested upon each one. We light this flame as a reminder of the light that gleams upon us and dances within each heart. The light that bids us shine.
Institute, A2, the B and venue. You are all and all welcome. All are welcome. Welcome on all. All are welcome. Achilasi. Welcome. All are welcome. Y-W, you're welcome. LOL, you too. Laugh out loud, you too. <laughs> All are welcome. The day of Pentecost has come. And we are all together in this place. Let's worship and rejoice. Go. Let us pray. Blessed to us is this day and blessed is the spirit of life that draws us together. As we worship, may the spirit of joy bring delight to the downhearted. May the spirit of compassion bring healing to the wounded. May the spirit of unity and inclusion bring comfort to those feeling isolated or forsaken. Dancing spirit Renew the dry bones of our dullness. Reignite our passion. Release our laughter and open our voices in praise. Amen. Come, 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 
It's like a Pero box. But it is red. It must be like a parable and yet not be a parable. I have an idea. Let's look inside and see what is there. There are some things inside to tell the story, but there is nothing else to put down to help us get ready. I guess all we can do is begin then. There once was a great tower. Everyone working on the tower spoke the same language as they worked together. But as the tower grew taller and taller, they began to talk in different ways. They wanted the tower to reach to the heavens. They grew so proud of themselves that they began to think they were greater builders than God. Each group thought it was better than any of the others. A huge noise replaced their talking and it made no sense. Everyone was babbling. Soon the tower fell down all by itself. So it was called the Tower of Babel. The language of people of earth was shattered and broken into pieces. Each one was beautiful, but it was only a piece of the old way of talking together. Thousands of years passed. Jesus was born and lived and did his work and then died on the cross. But that was not the end of the story because somehow he was still with the people around him, as he is with us. They kept seeing him, and they couldn't let him go. Then one day, something amazing happened. The disciples were in Jerusalem, Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the Less, Simon, and Jude. There are only 11 disciples because Judas has already died. Jesus took them outside of Jerusalem to a mountain nearby called Olivet. Jesus then went up, and soon the Holy Spirit would come down. They were full of joy, and they went to the temple to pray. Then they returned to the upper room with God's help.
and decided that Matthias would take Judah's place. On Sunday, the twelve were there together again, and suddenly there was a sound like a mighty wind rushing in to be with them. It was the Holy Spirit, and they became so full of its power that they seemed to be on fire. Their tongues burned in their mouths, and they ran down into the street to tell the story. They were so excited that people wondered what was going on. There were people there from many different countries. They spoke many different languages, but everyone could understand what they were saying. Everyone could see that the 12 had come close to God and that God had come close to them in a new way. The disciples had become apostles. They went out into the world to tell the story of Jesus and God's love. That was the first Christian Pentecost. But that is not the end of the story. Because it is still happening wherever people have the courage and power to tell the story. Pentecost is still happening. Now, I wonder what part of this story you like best. I wonder what the most important part could be. I wonder where you are in the story. reading from Acts 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native tongue? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, 
Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For the word in scripture among us and within us Thanks be to God. There's a little wheel, little wheel, little wheel a turning. There's a little wheel, little wheel. My heart, there's a little wheel, little wheel, little wheel a turning, cause the spirit of the Lord is in my heart. There's a little wheel, the spirit of the Lord. today, I acknowledge I'm standing on ground first called sacred by the Mi'kmaq people. It is their unceded territory and we are all treaty people. I'm Robin Brown Hewitt 
the United Church's chaplain in the multi-faith office at Dalhousie. Your generous support of the Mission and Service Fund makes my ministry possible. On your behalf, I serve the 18,000 plus students and staff in the Dal community. I'd like to share some stories from campus as we explore today's Bible readings. But first, a question. What's your honest opinion on dandelions? Are they cheery, bright, bee-loving broadcasters of spring, or are they the scourge of every gardener's manicured lawn? I asked this question of a friend of mine who had her own landscaping business. Dandelions, pretty flower or dirty weed? And she responded, Robin, if you can't contain it or control it, it's a weed. And she said that with some feeling. That's an all too human response. We love to control and contain things. And I agree, some things, like the COVID-19 virus, are certainly better contained completely. However, at this time of year, I tend to cheer for the uncontainable things, like springtime and dandelions, Pentecost, and the Holy Spirit. After this long period of pandemic strain and lockdown, I welcome a little uninhibited dandelion joyfulness. We could use a little encouragement right about now. And along comes Pentecost Sunday, right on time. So, three stories mixed with wild dandelion seeds of the Spirit. First, the story of the prophet Ezekiel in the Valley of Dry Bones. Ezekiel speaks and then a noise. The dry bones rattle as they come together. He speaks again and then the breath. God says, I will open your graves, my people. I will pour my spirit in you and you shall live. I hear echoes of those dry bones as Dal students file into the Monday night meal. For 15 consecutive years before the pandemic closed us down, the free weekly Monday night meal has been served up by the United Church Chaplaincy. Every Monday during the fall and winter term, dozens of hungry students come through the doors of the International Student Center and they're looking for a free meal. Now at the beginning of the term, we may identify each other by nationalities, religions, ethnicities, or areas of study. But as each term goes along, things liven up and friendships develop as the spirit of trust embraces everyone. The meal gives me the chance to meet with students who may be far from home, lonely, or a little lost. Many are severely stressed about relationships, addictions, finances, about their future. At the meal one night, a young woman said to me quietly, I'm so glad you do this. I'm so eager for Monday nights. It feels like the only safe place in my week. The Monday night meal represents more than a free meal, but it is a free meal. And the reality is that far too many students are desperately hungry. In all of Canada, student food insecurity is greatest here in Halifax and at Dow. During the exam season, the number of students without access to good food can be as high as 74%. Three out of every four students are hungry. Now in September, we hope the Monday night meal will return. It's only one small response to a very large need, but then again, consider the effect of one dandelion on a field. Second story from the gospel that's named for John, in the days before Jesus' death, Jesus seeks to reassure the first disciples and us that he would send the Spirit, or Advocate. 
When we're open to receiving it, the promised spirit will reveal itself to us in unexpected ways through unexpected people. And Jesus said, this advocate will help us prove the world wrong. You've probably heard your share of those typically very offensive jokes that begin with a priest, a rabbi, an imam walk into a room. Well, this is no joke. This is my reality in the multi-faith office. While working at Dow, I can regularly report, last night a minister, a rabbi, an imam, a Unitarian, a Quaker, a Buddhist, a Baha'i, a Taoist, a pagan, a Mormon, a humanist, and a Sikh Bangra dancer all walked into the same room. This would be the monthly meeting of Interfaith Harmony Halifax. Interfaith Harmony Halifax Week is an annual event that's celebrated locally and globally every year in February. Sadly, we humans do love to control and contain things, including dandelions and also other people. And our lives are filled with images of communities and religions at war, glaring examples of hatred and division. We may meet someone who practices a faith other than Christianity and decide right away, well, that's impossible. We'll never get along. However, here in Halifax, I've witnessed one small group which seeks to prove the world wrong. The Interfaith Harmony Halifax team is committed to building a peaceful city, despite our significant religious differences. Yes, we make mistakes and apologies have to happen, but the group keeps working. The babble created by the Interfaith Harmony team when we meet reminds me of the Pentecost story. People from every background and country, different languages and cultures, all together in one place, whether it be via Zoom or in the same room. In my imagination, I see dandelion seeds of the spirit uncontrollably whirling about in this mix of diversity and unity. The crowd that gathered centuries ago in Jerusalem, they met on Pentecost not in a church, not in a temple, but together in one place. They met in a house with doors open in all directions to all peoples. Jesus told his followers to wait. The advocate would come, and it did, and it will again, and it will again. Pentecost is a dramatic example of the Spirit's ability to empower and unify when our hearts and our doors are open to each other. One last story and a big thank you. The remaining scripture passage for Pentecost Sunday is found in the book of Romans and contains these beautiful words. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. The transition from home to university is very, very difficult, but the transition from a past identity into an authentic gender identity can be much more difficult. There are young people at Dow who are struggling with questions of identity. They're looking for support and they're looking for a safe place to land. The spirit hears their sighs too deep for words. As an affirming ministry, the chaplaincy provides an ally for the LGBTQ communities on campus. Back in March, members of Hope United supported me by providing homemade pies. Why pie? Well, March 14th, or 314, is Pie Day. And for affirming ministries in the United Church, Pi Day provides an opportunity to demonstrate a public, intentional, 
an explicit commitment to justice and inclusion for all, all sexual orientations and gender identities. The donations received for, of the Tasty Pies were given to Dow Out, the Student Queer Society, and to South House Sexual and Gender Resource Centre. The money will be used by them to fund bursaries for LGBTQ students. $400 was raised this year, thanks to you. It may not seem like a large amount for bursaries, but remember that dandelion. This is a particular student group that can't often depend on the faith communities for support. So the support and the pies from the United Church are very much appreciated. Thanks so much for inviting me to worship with you on Pentecost. Thanks for your support of the United Church Chaplaincy at Dalhousie. In days to come, may the spirit of Pentecost renew our United Church and our communities. But in the meantime, enjoy the dandelions. In star and crescent, wheel and flame, in broken cross and empty tomb, we image forth one matchless name, one holy matrix found and womb. Though different cultures, tribes, and lands use lenses grown to a differing sight, each color. I invite you to join me now as we pray. Creator of life, maker of joyful dandelion and distant star, we pray out of deep gratitude for the beauty and the bounty of this earth, for the greening of the garden, and for the promises of springtime. May the Holy Spirit bless our community again renewing our dry bones, reviving the church for service in the world. Breath of life, as close as our own tears, we pray out of deep sorrow for all who suffer this day, for a world torn by hatred and violence, for a planet endangered by greed or indifference, and communities threatened by poverty and pandemic. May the sacred spirit intercede with sighs too deep for words, bringing comfort and healing, provoking justice and peace. 
Holy mystery, heart of the universe, the one on whom our hearts rely, we pray out of deep wonder. Grant to us the imagination of children, the passion of youth, the wisdom of elders. May the spirit of Pentecost, of wind and flame, open our mouths to proclaim good news, open our hands to serve our neighbors, and open our hearts to you, O God, and to one another. So be it. Amen. with the Spirit early in the morning, walk with the Spirit throughout the long day, work and hope for the new life of born, and listen to the Spirit to show you the way. Dance with the Spirit with the spirit.